Creative Kids today, for obvious reasons. So we're going to bring Creative Kids to you at home. So I'm just back from the beach, which you saw, and it's a beautiful day for it. And we have all these materials gathered. So I love driftwood, personally. So I gathered all this driftwood together. You're going to need some, and you can alternate with whatever kind of materials you like for this. So you don't have to have what I have here. Perhaps you have something better in your recycling bin or in your art box. So have a little root, gather all your pieces together, like I have done here. And yeah, we're gonna get creative. So what I have is I have my paint, I have some shells, this kind of material from old oranges. I have my egg boxes and some other kinds of cardboard. Toilet roll, we've been talking a lot about this lately. So these are great actually for building. And what we're gonna to build today is we're going to build our own house, any kind of house you'd like to. Also old fabrics can be great. So maybe you have some old cushion covers or old clothing that you don't want to use anymore. Nice fabrics and textures. Um, I have my glue gun. Glue guns are great. If you don't have glue guns, actually, they are in little at the moment. So you might want to pick some of those up. And I have some tiles. And I've smashed up my tile, as I showed earlier, into all these lovely little pieces. So basically, it's about having lots of stuff and sitting down and seeing what you can make with them. And just having fun in the process. I have no idea what I'm going to make. I don't know what's going to end up, as usual. So anyone who comes to Creative Kids class, we always set an intention of what we're going to make and then it can change as you go along. So that's the nice thing about the creative process. So I have looked up my favourite architect, which is Gaudi. And I kind of like Gaudi because of all his different shapes. So I've looked it up on the computer, so you might want to spend some time yourself looking up your favourite architect. Like Gaudi is my favourite one. So if you want to look up Gaudi, we'll link Gaudi buildings. Maybe you want to look up some of his pieces too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with all the different Gaudi buildings, see what materials I have, and I'm going to do my own little sketch. So. So, as you can see, my sketch is very rough. I haven't given any time to detail. We're talking just a couple of seconds to get a rough idea. The materials are going to guide the creative process here more for me because the kind of artist I am, I like to sit down and let the materials kind of drive the process as opposed to really thinking about how perfect it needs to be. So I'm really happy with that. Nice and messy, just like I like it. A rough idea, set a tone, set an idea and then take it into the process of actually making it. So yeah, let's dive into that. So here I'm again... I like to work really rough. These are going to be the top of my building. I love Gaudi because he just does really natural wibbly wobbly lines. Like we live in Ireland and our houses are all quite square. There isn't much circular, but if anyone's been actually to Amsterdam or been to Barcelona, sorry, they'll have seen Gaudi buildings. Sagrada Familia, La Pradrera. And it's like walking through a giant sculpture, it really is. The colours, the shapes, and you're just in this giant piece of art. He's quite exceptional as an architect. So for me, I always feel like a child when I'm going into a Gaudi building, so that's why I love it. And that's why I'm inspired by Gaudi. It's not that I'm making a Gaudi building, but I'm inspired by him. Okay, so we're cutting out our template for the walls of our building. And I really like this cardboard as well because it's got a nice finish on it for painting afterwards. So I have my paint there and a big aspect of Gaudi's designs is his colour. He loves vibrant colours, colours that just raise the mood. He's got all these different textures. And if anyone wants to look up Gaudi actually, when he was a small boy, he would wander the streets and pick up dried lizards, would you believe? He was really inspired. Anyone who's seen him has seen all the like lizard pieces he made. He was really inspired by them as a child even. He would pick up things. So I think that's why I love Gaudi as well. Like I was out at the beach today and I was just gathering things and getting inspired by the world around me. 
not really looking for anything spectacular, but finding spectacular things just at the beach as I'm doing my walk. We've all been doing lots of walks the last week and it makes it really exciting to think, oh, okay, what could I make out of this stone? Or what could I make out of this little piece of driftwood? Like, how could I make this into something spectacular? And all free and cheap and easy. Okay, so that's pretty rough, which I like. I'm not looking for perfection here because that's not what I like personally. But if you wanted to make like really square walls, if there's any architects out there, if your moms or dads are architects, this is not an architectural building. This is just for fun. So as you see, I have my cardboard and I'm gonna start bending it into the shape that I want for my building. Okay. And the nice thing is you can have like a set plan where it's step by step of how to make it and that works for some people. Like you might want to really make a plan and write down first I'm doing this, first I'm doing that. Or you may, might be like me and you don't want to have a set plan, you just want to see what the materials guide you with, like what works. Even as I'm bending the cardboard here, it's starting to crack and I was thinking it was going to be smooth, but I'm going to work that into my design. I'm going to work with it as opposed to against it, which is really nice. Okay. Nice idea, just use something circular. This is my jar of PVA. I'm just using it to... Okay. So now, this is my rough shape. Kind of looks like a hat. Make it a hat if you want. It doesn't have to be a building. Or, okay, so we're making our house. So we're going to put these two pieces together, like so. And that's going to be the rough shape of the building that I'm going to make. Am I happy with that? I am. Okay. So this is where the hot glue comes into it. If you're using an adult hot glue gun like I am, I always call them adult glue guns or children's glue guns in my class. Anyone who comes to my class knows that. But this is an adult glue gun, so you do need to have an adult with you if you're using this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hot glue gun down, down on the base, and then I'm just going to stick on the walls of my building on top of that hot glue. And I'm going to stick them here, and I'm going to stick them here. And then I'm going to have the rough structure of my building. Now, what I also want to have for my building is some windows. So I have that, so I'm gonna actually mark out where I'm gonna put my windows and cut those out before I stick it down, just because it's easier. Okay. I'm making each window a different shape because anyone who looks up Gaudi style things, they're always really, like I said earlier, kind of, it's almost like, how is that a window? I'm not sure how Gaudi actually designed these you know, he was very clever with how things worked, but they're always just wibbly wobbly odd shapes, which I love. So I'm putting on my little windows. I'm gonna find a nice material to make those windows later. And as you see, everything I'm doing is really rough and ready. Just how I like it. Okay. So, me and Brinny are ready for our next stage. This is Brinny. Brinny, do you love to make Gaudi buildings too? Oh, you do. He does. Okay. All right, so we are going to hot glue on the base of our building. Now, I didn't mention earlier, because you can see there's a lot of materials here that I have. Clay, which is one of my favorite mediums. Medium means whatever you're using to make something. So this is a medium, this is a medium. Everything that I'm using is a medium. All the wood I got. So if I use words like that, that's what medium means. It means. Okay, so this is clay. You can get this in Cocklands actually. In, it's a bag of air drying clay. I think it's like 15 euros. If you want to ask the grown-ups to get it, it lasts you so long as long as it's airtight. It needs to be airtight to keep it nice and wet. And clay actually just comes from the ground. So it's also a natural... Um, material which is what I love about it so I am going to use that air drying clay and the nice thing is this is air drying so it'll just dry and you won't have to do anything with it like bake it in an oven so I can actually use this with the cardboard 
with, with the wood, with the stones, and I don't have to worry about doing anything to it. So it's a kind of a nice joining material, like if you were building a wall, you know, the plaster. You can use it in between as well, and it's really nice. So if you have some clay, um, that's a lovely thing that you can use as well. Okay, so I've gathered together all of my um, little leftover pieces that I might use later. This is actually just a box from the mushrooms that you buy. Uh, like the egg boxes, there's loads of lovely different shapes and sizes. So perhaps even if you got these, you could have a ready-made little building. You don't have to go make one from scratch and cut it out like I did. But for what I want to make, that's what suits. Okay, so we're ready for the hot gluing. I have my nice piece of wood that I have er had earlier and I've got that ready and I'm going to start gluing down my piece and let's see what happens. Okay. So you have to hold it just for a couple of seconds until that glue dries. So if you're using air drying glue, it's really good because it dries really fast. I'm just holding that in place. Another alternative from air drying glue is PVA glue, which I have here, but it does take over 24 hours to dry. So the, really the hot glue gun is brilliant. Okay, so now we have the rough outline of our building created. So I'm quite happy with that. It's nice and rough and ready, but I know the rough shape that I have. You can see inside my little windows. And I'm ready to start thinking about what I'm gonna do next. So, Gaudi, we'll link again one of his images, uh, loved to create kind of like little mini sculptures. So for example, his apartments, which are called Le Pedrera, which is my favorite building, um, you go up to the rooftop of the apartments and you kind of can look over all these little mini sculptures. You can see other Gaudi buildings as well from on the top of it. But the most amazing thing is he has miniature sculptures which are quite large, maybe, maybe two to three times the height of an adult person. But they're really, really big and there's kind of like smashed bottles and smashed glass actually sunk into Gaudi's buildings. And they're so cool because of the color and the texture. So I want to try and emulate that, but with my own materials from West Cork. So we're gonna have our mismatch kind of Gaudi West Cork building. That's what I want for my piece. So I'm gonna try and have a little look and kind of suss out which out of all the materials that I have here, I want to use because I have a lot. I spent about an hour at the beach collecting all the things that I could find and I want to see how can I create with what I have a kind of a Gaudi West Cork-esque vibe to my piece. Okay. These guys are all quite similar sizes so I'm thinking that I might have these hot glued onto the edge of my building and then what I might do is paint them afterwards in nice colourful ways. So that's what I want to use. So now I need to find all the different ones that would be a similar size and I'm going to build them onto the outside of my cardboard building. Okay, let's get busy with that.
so I'm now thinking about the roof of my lovely building and this is actually a box that the mushrooms come in from Lidl and we've just disconnected it at the edges and there's not actually anything that I want to do with this other than use it as my rooftop. So I'm going to place it, I'm going to get my hot glue gun again and I'm just going to stick it down and maybe I'll do some editing afterwards to the edges but any little holes that are created I can add a little piece of cardboard in afterwards but actually I'm looking at it and I really like that it's quite natural and curvy and that kind of idea that I wanted earlier when, when I was making my lovely sketch. Just like lots of random shapes and melted different edges and lines. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go with this. I don't actually have to do anything else. And that's really exciting when you find a piece of material that you don't have to do much with. You don't have to invent a new shape. You're just working with the shapes that you already have. So let's get the glue gun and let's just go for it. Let's just put our glue down on the top of our building. The one little thing I will say to you when you're using a hot glue gun is it's great that it dries really fast and really hard, but it also means you have to work quite fast with the hot glue. So I'm probably, if it dries, you can always just go over it again with a layer. And because I'm making a design that I'm happy with kind of the edges being rough, it's okay, that's all right. I'm not looking for perfection at all. In fact, quite the opposite here with my building. So I'm putting on the hot glue as fast as I can. It's quite tricky on the edges. Oh, my hair is getting stuck there. Okay. And this really is a hot glue gun. So even if you're using it with an adult, which I really recommend doing, you can see there's steam coming off this. I don't know if you can see that on the video. There's actually steam coming off this. So it is very, very hot, the hot glue gun. So really, really, you know, health and safety there. You don't want to get a burn from a hot glue gun. It hurts. It does. You can just put your finger under some cold water, but it's not a nice thing. You probably, if you have used a hot glue gun before, you'll know exactly what I mean about getting a glue, getting a burn from a hot glue gun. Okay, so I'm sticking it down. It's all about holding it down in place on the glue before it dries. I'll probably attach this in some sections and then need to go back over with the glue gun again. But we have a lot of time, so we'll have time to do that. So just holding it in place like you're clamping it down and I can feel that that has stuck in quite a lot of places actually. Here's going to need a little redo. How are we over here? Yeah, here's going to need a little redo as well. But other than that, I've gotten about half stuck. So I'm going back in with my glue gun again and making sure that everything's strengthened up. So I'm not being shy with my glue. I'm really going along in sections and I'm kind of using it as a filler as well if there's any little holes. Glue guns in itself you can nearly make art with just the glue gun. So as you go don't rush it like do, an, do a section and then wait a little while. Like hold it in place for a little while. So it really really connects from piece to piece. share our different kinds of designs afterwards. Like everyone's house looks different. You know, you go to your friend's house and their house looks completely different with different colors and different shapes and different sizes. It's exciting, isn't it? To see kind of different ideas that people have. So I'm only doing my idea. Normally I would have, you know, 15 gorgeous creative kids making all their different ones and we get to share them. So the only thing is we have to share them online this week and maybe next week, but same thing. They're all going to look different and they're all, I can't wait to see them actually. I'm pretty excited to see what people come up with. Maybe you're going to have a much better design. Maybe you have a better idea than a hot glue gun. So let's share that. Let's get going. Let's get creative. Or maybe yours isn't even a building. Maybe it's a rocket. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay. So happy with my roof. It's looking good. You can see the little guy there. I've stuck on some of my wood which has got me thinking about that. And I have my little mushroom roof, I'm going to call it. I think it looks a bit like a mushroom, these little edges. So, okay, let's start finalizing this a little bit. I'm going to turn it around to you so that you see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you see my natural driftwood. This is the driftwood that I got on the beach this morning. I'm going to do that all around my building because I'm really, really happy with my driftwood. I love it. And it took me quite a while to collect, but it's beautiful. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to glue wood all along the edge. Okay, 
so as I'm building there, I'm going to use the scrap pieces that I cut out from my windows and I'm just going to fill in the holes on top of my roof. Because actually, as I'm looking there, they're just over here and left over. Because I'm going to actually put a cover on the roof anyway, so I'm not worried about it being detailed, so I'm just sticking them into the little holes there. I'm just going to do something fun in a minute with this. And it's funny because as you're making this, you're going to get more and more ideas. Like you really don't need to know what you're going to make at the beginning. I personally like not knowing what I'm going to make at the beginning. So as I'm making the roof, I'm getting like, oh, those eureka moments. You know, when you see the, in cartoons, the little light bulb goes bing. Yeah, I keep getting those bing. Like, oh, I know what I could do. I could like fill this with PVA and put sand on top. The, the plan just keeps changing as you go along. It's really exciting, you know? And you'll know what I mean now if you go making one of these or making anything really. It's, um, it's really fun to see what happens and what's going to happen and not know what's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? You're just sitting there. And sometimes literally I look at the clock and it goes from 10 minutes passing to suddenly four hours passing. If you don't believe me, try it. It just, you get so into it. And we definitely have a lot of time at the moment. You know, maybe when you're finished your exercise from school and you just want to have some fun, this is a perfect thing to do. And you'll lose so much time just figuring it out really. Where things go, what you're going to do, it's fun. If it's not fun, don't be doing it. That's what I always say. So this is absolutely fun. This is creative fun at its essence. You're just sitting down, spending time with yourself, making something. Or if you're brothers and sisters, you know, why not try and get them involved? I think that's one of the nice things about what's going on at the moment. Is normally you're in school and you're separated from your brothers and sisters. Or your parents are off working. This is a time where you can sit down maybe and make something together. You know? Come up with ideas together. It can be a really nice thing to do. Okay. Like me and Brynny are doing here. We're sitting down together and we're making our house so you could bring your doggy in on as well if you want to do. Okay so at this stage I've added a lot of pieces of wood and I think I'm done with the wood. I'm going to move on to adding some of my tile. This is definitely inspired by Gaudi adding the tile. He loved smashing up tile. He also used to smash up glass and things. I'm not going to smash up glass now but maybe when you're having your walk at the beach you could find some of that. You know that gorgeous like little pieces of glass that have been rushed around the sea and they go all smooth at the edge you can get like green ones and red ones beach glass or is there i don't know what the other name for that is but i often find them at the beach my guys are falling off as you see this is because i have not dried out my driftwood i literally got it from the beach came into the art center and i'm going so you might want to dry yours out near a radiator for a day or two days if you want just because they're quite damp so the glue the hot glue isn't taken to them but we're going we're just going to keep going for now anyway um, for the purpose of this video basically. So I am ready to start adding my tiles. Um, keep in mind that I know I'm going to add paint at the end, like I'm really going to bring colour. You can see some of the colours that I put out earlier. I'm going to definitely add some colour to my work because I want to today. That's what I'm in the mood for. So keep in mind that I know that even though I'm adding these that I'm going to bring colour into it. So like less is more sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add color over the top. So I'm not too worried about the finish of my piece. I'm really just enjoying the process of the shapes and adding them on and seeing what happens. That's where I'm at at the moment. Now, so these are my egg cartons that I talked about earlier. And looking at my egg cartons, I really like these little guys inside. These really remind me of that place I was talking about, Le Perdrera, that building in uh, Barcelona the Gaudi building and he made lots of these kind of shapes like for want of a better word really like the an ice cream cone or that's what they reminded me of anyway like melting ice cream cones or sand castles or you know ice that's met that those kind of shapes he seemed to create a lot in his work so I love those shapes and these little guys here remind me of them so I'm just going to cut these guys out now I don't think I'm going to even do any more with them so you can see all the egg cartons have different ones. Um, these guys seem to have a similar shape. So I'm just going to opt for this one because it's going to be easier to paint on than the green one. But it doesn't really matter. You can add layers of paint. So I happen to have two of these guys. Um, and I'm going to cut out these little ones and maybe add them somewhere here. Maybe to emulate the little shapes that are popping up from my driftwood that I'm quite enjoying. Yeah, I'm going to add some more of those. So.
So I'm gluing on my little rooftop decorations. And remember, this house is not a house that we need to live in. It can be anything you want to. There can be a dragon on top of your house. There can be whatever, you know what I mean. You can do anything you want to really. So like these things make no sense. And actually when Gaudi was designing it, it was just for aesthetics. Aesthetics mean, you know, just what you see looks nice. So I'm just putting on these for aesthetics, something that looks nice for absolutely no reason other than it's cool to look at. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding nice things. And it's really nice to play when you're making something imaginative. You know, it's not functional. It's just something that's fun to make and imagine living in. The first time that I went to Gaudi's building, Le Padre, or those apartments, I couldn't believe that people actually live inside in this building, that this is their home. Very different to anything that we live in. Okay, so I have stuck on all my little pieces of wood. I'm pretty happy with that for now. I'm gonna go back and maybe fill in little gaps later, but for now I'm kind of excited to start thinking about some other things. So you can bounce between pieces that you do anyway as you go. Right, PVA glue. Much better than the hot glue gun for what I'm gonna do now, because it dries slow. So. With the hot glue, you can't really add different materials to it. So what I want to do is I want to kind of create sand, a sand finish on all my little surrounding areas of my house. Okay, so I have some sand, but that wouldn't really stick to the hot glue gun as well. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use PVA glue. So this is some PVA glue. I like to keep it in a jar, which is kind of easy to access it then, and it keeps it nice um, and dry, or nice and wet, so it's not drying out. So I'm putting in my brush. And I'm painting on my PVA just like you would paint. If you haven't used PVA before, you should know that it dries really shiny. Um, you can add it really thick. So you can add things like sand or wood or beads or glitter or shells. Um, and the only downside is that it takes about 24 hours to dry, depending on how warm the place that you're drying it in. So if it's quite thin, it could dry in a few hours, but generally if it's really thick, it takes a long time to dry. So I'm pasting on my PVA, and I'm not worried about being so fast here, because I know that it takes a long time to dry. If you wanted to speed it up, you could use a hair dryer, I suppose. If it's really thick though, it is a full day really, I've noticed it takes to dry, but we have loads of time, so you could do this section, leave it dry till the next day, and then come back to it perhaps. I'm going to leave mine dry while I have my lunch and then I'm going to come back to it to, I'm going to put it underneath the heater so that it dries pretty fast. So I'm being generous with my PVA glue. I'm adding it on around my building. So once I have the PVA on, I'm putting down my sand. I'm going to get a little bit messy here. And if you're okay with your hands getting messy, you can just smoothen it around. I'm sprinkling on my sand around the outside of my building. Just it's a nice finish, it's a nice texture to paint on top. Ha, ah, look at that. Some little stones have fallen out of my sand that I missed. That all adds to the magic. I'm sprinkling on my sand around the whole building. And then I might go back in with a little brush and just Make sure that every little piece has got a little bit of sand added to it. Move it around if you want. The PVA really takes everything you put on it. Later when I come back to this, I'm going to knock off the excess sand. I'm not going to do that now. When it dries, it'll catch all the sand I wanted to and then I'll knock off the excess. Really nice finish. Uh, we definitely have a lot of sand in Clannacilty. So I've missed a little spot over here. I'm going back in with my brush with my PVA, making sure I've right it up to the edge, which is what I want. Nice finish. Missed another little spot. Back in with my brush with my PVA. The nice thing is you can get a very large amount of PVA, super cheap. So if you don't have PVA, 
you can grab some in Cycling Cocklands. And it's so cheap and it goes such a long way. You'll use it again for other projects again and again. So now my little house has his nice sandy garden around him. And I'm going to leave that for a couple of hours to dry. I'm going to pop mine under a heater because I want it to dry fast for this video. Um, and it should be dry in about an hour after I have my lunch underneath a heater because it's really thin, the PVA. But if you add it really thick, you might want to leave it overnight and come back to it. Okay, so let's get back to this when it's dry. Okay, guys, so this is dry for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. It's still a little bit damp. I'd leave it dry a, bit, a little bit longer. But we have our base down now, so it's nice and covered. And this is where I'm going to do some clay. So if you have some clay, great. If not, what would be alternatives? You could use like kitchen paper or toilet paper, or newspaper with some PVA and mix it up and make like a mulch. Um, and that would do fine as well for what I'm gonna do, which is just, I'm gonna make a little wall on the outside of my guy um, and decorate it with some more of these kind of things that I got from the beach. The stones and the little pieces of driftwood and maybe I'm going to add some shells before I go doing the painting. I'm also going to start sticking on these tiles that I meant to do earlier. So, with the air drying clay, if you touch it too much it dries out and it goes a little bit hard. But at the same time you have to. So if you haven't used clay before it's nice to take like a pea sized amount and just get a feel for it. And then if that dries out, that's fine. Um, you can just put it to the side. But with the clay, um, it's good not to touch it too much. So I love doing clay. It's the same as Play-Doh or any of those kind of substances. So the air drying clay here sits really well onto the sand with PVA that's dried. You can kind of, even at the edge, you can mulch them in together. And you can always go over this wall afterwards with more PVA and sand if you like. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a little wall on the outside of my little house. You can use tools if you like, like if you have some tools, clay tools at home. But actually the best tools you have are your hands. It's really easy to mould and, and take as much time as you do this. We're going to fast forward to the end of my wall now. Okay, so I'm just finishing off my wall now with smoothening down the walls with a little damp sponge. And it's really important that you don't put loads of water on the clay because then some bits are really wet and some bits are a bit more dry and it's just not good for the clay. The clay likes, when you're smoothing it off, it just likes minimal amount of water but it's more the rubbing makes it nice and smooth. Okay, so I've smoothened down all the walls and I'm happy with them. You could spend a really long time doing that actually. Sometimes I really love to just, you know, your finger as well on the edge will really smoothen them. But um, we're just gonna move on with it now. So I smoothened down my walls and I think I am ready. La -la! Okay, I'm actually really enjoying this process because it's interesting to see what happens when I don't know what I was gonna make, what the plan was before. I had a rough idea, but already actually the drawing has changed quite a lot. I didn't have a wall in my plan. Um, so things can build and change as you go. Okay, I'm rolling up my sleeves and I'm interested to start looking at these guys, which is my smashed tile that I got my hammer and did earlier. And Gaudi, the architect that I was looking at when I was drawing my picture and getting inspired by, he loves using kind of smashed glass and smashed tiles. So keep in mind, if you are using smashed glass, you definitely need a grown up with you, an adult, okay? Um, and maybe some protective gloves, but <coughs> these are smooth at the edge, so I'm okay. And I have these little pieces of colored glass that I had from a mosaic project I did another time. You could equally add sweet sweet wrappers, like, sh like the sweet wrappers on the edge, they have those lovely reds and yellows and greens. Um, you could use those and glue them down and you'd have a similar effect and it wouldn't be glass, so that would be an option or any other materials that you can think of that are coloured uh, for this kind of technique or effect. So I'm bringing in my tiles and I'm back in with my glue gun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these to my roof. 
I'm going to add some of these lovely mosaic details to my roof. So off we go with the hot glue again. The hot glue will work really well for the tiles as well. You don't need anything else. It's really, really strong, the hot glue. So again, if you didn't have a hot glue gun, I would suggest using some other kind of lighter material. It's just about getting kind of like whatever you are happy with. So I kind of want that rough finish on my piece. And yeah, I'm liking the finish of that. So now what I'm going to start adding, I feel like I need some color. I'm going to start adding some color. So yes, I have this lovely glass. It's all broken, but I'm not into making perfect windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start hot gluing some of this colored glass on the windows. I didn't mention it late earlier, but I have these really cool little fairy lights now I don't know about you guys but I got these at Christmas and they come with these little batteries um, and you can just turn on the lights and they're portable if you have some of these these could be a really nice thing to add afterwards you know like little night lights I think I'm gonna put mine inside my building and have the light shining out but I'm not sure yet but anyway really handy so if you've left over Christmas ones or you want to do a route for them um, what a nice way to upcycle them I know you can use them every year but you can still take them out of your house um, and use them at Christmas again anyway. So they're a nice little addition to making something is to add a little bit of light. So we have all the shells and all this wood. My clay on my wall is still actually wet. So what I'm thinking is um, I'd like to add some little posts outside which would kind of emulate making little trees or some shrubs or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find pieces of wood that I like here and I'm going to stick some into my little wall maybe on the inside and then they could be like a little um, bush along the outside of my house so yeah that's what I'm going to do actually as I'm looking at my pieces here I'm thinking it'd be kind of cool if I did, you know, the, the, the little sticks up and then I could attach my lights onto them maybe. So it's really exciting actually as you start making things, other ideas will pop into your head so one idea will trigger another idea. So I actually like that process of not knowing what I'm going to do, like I said earlier. And it really excites me because as I go, this is now informing. I didn't know I was going to do that but then as I start doing it, it's kind of exciting. So that's, that's the joy of... Um, making things and that's the joy of being creative is you start with an idea and then you look at what you have you build the idea and new ideas come that's the whole exciting part of it so sometimes people can be or I can be I should say anyway a little bit afraid to go making something I haven't been made before but then after I make it I have a new thing that I want to make so it's kind of never-ending you know you get inspired even walking at the beach this morning, I was getting really inspired every time I found something. Then when I came back and I put my pieces on my table, I was getting excited about something else I was gonna make. And it's just never ending, you know? Maybe when you share your ideas with your friends, you could do it online. You'll start coming up with cool ideas together. Who knows where it goes? But that's the whole pleasure of making things. It's kind of like a little adventure. Okay. So I'm going to add a few more of those and then we're going to go back into doing our little windows and then I've got some other things to add here and some colour and hopefully then we'll be done unless I get really excited again and then we could be here for another couple of hours. I don't know. That's what happens sometimes. But let's see. Okay, so I've hot glued on some coloured glass that I had. Um... Absolutely use sweet wrappers if you wanted to make some colored glass windows You could just stick those on the outside and they work just as well as colored glass because The colored glass can be not very safe to use on your own without an adult You'd have to use an adult if you're doing any of these glass or tiling. I absolutely um, Suggest that so the little fairy lights I pop them in a window and they're inside now shining You can't see it too well with the lights on 
but I'll take a picture later and show you what it looks like with the lights off just to get an idea so that is the back little green and red window and then at the front we have a little green and red window you can see all these little spidey web kind of things on them that's just the hot glue leaves all these strings so if you are a perfectionist you can go around and take them off okay so we definitely need to add some more color now uno problemo with our clay it's not going to be dry right now because it takes a day sometimes two days again like the pva it depends on how hot where you're drying it is but i'm not going to be able to let this clay dry because i'm doing this video now so i'm just going to paint over wet clay but 100 percent just because what i can do is i can separate from the clay so just wait until your clay is dry you could leave it overnight or maybe if you did in the morning you could leave it till the evening depending on how hot where you're drying it is and depending on how thick the clay is as well so if the clay is really thin if you make something thin it'll dry faster and if it's thicker it'll take longer um, okay so I'm thinking about color and it's okay sometimes to take a minute and figure out what you might like to do I'm thinking as well that these little top pieces need a little bit more shapes and things I'm thinking back to Gaudi's buildings with all those different shapes and textures and colors and I'm wondering what could I do here to add a little bit more excitement with what's going on also I've now used my fairy lights for the inside of the building so I'm gonna to have to make some things for these so I'm gonna get a little bit playful here and I'm thinking that because he makes all these different shapes and if you look up the Gaudi buildings he makes all these different circular shapes and ice cream shapes I'm going to go back to my clay again and I'm going to make some other little shapes and just stick them on top of all my little lamps out here and maybe I'll paint those as well later. So that's what I'm going to do next before I go painting. So I am making lots of different shapes for the top of each of these little posts outside on my wall. Because that's one of my favourite things about um, Gaudi's architecture is he really makes lots of cool funky shapes it's literally like walking through a playground if you walk through one of his buildings there's just you know really unusual shapes and forms so it's nice to make some of them in clay some look like little mushrooms or ice creams well at least i should say that's what they remind me of so I'm adding lots of fun little things on the pieces outside. And I think I'm going to paint these later after they've dried or semi-dried. But if you let them dry, it's easier to paint them. I think I'm going to paint them nice, funky, bright colours. Add a little splash of colour to my house. It's more fun as well that way. Okay, we are getting there with our house. I have my little post made. and um, You can literally make take a week to make yours. I'm just making mine here in the art centre in a little quick session but the nice thing is this could become a city, this could become a village, this could become anything you want it to become. So I've made my posts and what I'm going to do now is these are toothpicks. Toothpicks are really handy with what I want to do. So there's little on the top of our cardboard pieces as you see you can just add the toothpicks in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to Make, put some little clay pieces on top. So I'm making a little clay piece, some other little funky shapes, ones that I liked on the outside, so let me have a look at mine. I think my favorite kind of Gaudi shape is these twisting spiral ones. So you just get a little bit of clay. Clay is the fastest, handiest thing to make, but you could equally make it from tissue paper and PVA or something like that, or cardboard, whatever you want yourself. So I'm just making a little shape with the clay, and then I'm actually just spinning around the clay like that. You get these little twisty forms on top. If you look up Gaudi the architect, um, you'll know what I mean. So, fun fact about Gaudi. You know when you hear people say something's gaudy? That comes from the architect Gaudi. Because Gaudi kind of doesn't say no to anything. He's like colour, shape, the madder, the better, the crazier, the better. It's just really... A lot of different textures and forms and colors together which I love maybe it's not for everyone but that's really what I love I love the brighter and the more fun and just the more texture the better for me so that's why I love Gaudi and I'm definitely not alone with loving Gaudi but 
you'll see what I mean when you look him up if you don't know him. So I'm adding that guy in on the top because it's just them all being the same, this like egg shaped thing is a little bit repetitive for me. So I'm liking that little guy. He could be like a chimney. Will we put a little hole in him so he's a chimney? I don't know, we could, we don't have to, but he looks a bit like a little chimney now. And over here, I'm going to make some circle shapes. I was looking up Gaudi over here on my computer because I'm just seeing all the different shapes and textures and things that he does, which is kind of nice to get inspired by. Okay. And also, I'm not making a Gaudi building, I'm making a Roisin building. So I'm having my own interpretation of it. I'm just having fun with it. It's really good. It's good crack, you know, to have a look at someone else, be inspired by them, and kind of make your own of it, thing of it then. I've always loved Gaudi. I've always made things kind of incorporated in the fact that he uses a lot of color and he uses a lot of form. And just for some reason, it works. It's almost like it shouldn't work, but it does work. He's a bit mad with the colors and the shape. So really having fun with it now like there's circles and there's yeah I'm getting excited about this now I'm starting to see my house in its finished piece I'm starting to see what colors I want to add on I'm getting really excited and that hopefully that will happen for you too when you're designing your house you will start to get excited you start to look at it and go oh yeah cool it's working out and I didn't expect that would happen and I hadn't thought about this and it just starts to get exciting it starts to get exciting when you see the finishing pieces coming together okay I'm adding on some more shapes to my little chimneys, or I don't know what I'm calling them. Funny little chimneys here. I'm definitely going to paint these chimneys afterwards some nice bright colours because I'm 100% I'm missing out on the colour in my piece. I love colour. The more colour the better for me when it comes to making things. So I'm going to splash on some really vibrant colours and if you look up Gaudi buildings you'll see why I'm saying I'm inspired by him because he's all about the colour. He's about the tile, he's about the colour, he's about the excitement and there is such beaut- like Gaudi has walls that he's painted in his buildings and they're just all these vibrant metallic colours and things. It's really exciting to see. Okay, so with that in mind I'm adding my last little chimney there on that little back guy. He is looking a little bit left out from other chimneys. I'm gonna go with another twisty thing, I think. Okay, using my toothpick. And then I just need a little bit more clay. Join the two pieces together. And when the clay is wet like this, you don't really need any more than Closer. You don't really need any more than just the clay. You don't need to add any water or anything like that. The clay will kind of mold itself. Okay, so now. Okay, last but not least, I have all these little guys. Super cool from the beach. Don't need to build them. They're there. They're free. They're easy to find. So everyone probably has a couple of jars at home full of shells already. If you live in Clannacilty, you 100% do. Like me. Millions and millions and millions. So let's get to using them. If you don't, you definitely are going to have a walk on the beach in the next few days. So just collect them. I like these guys because they're they're nice and you know you can put them on top of a little piece of wood and they already look like what I want to make now which is maybe some little miniature shapes out here. So I'm going to make a little outside garden of, you can call them mushrooms, you can call them shell trees, whatever you want. But I just think they'd be cute to add to my little building just to have something outside. So I'm getting some of my little pieces of driftwood that I found on my walk this morning again and I'm gonna glue them outside here okay so let's just go I'm gonna also paint these shells afterwards to add another splash of color because I was saying I'm missing out on the color side of things so actually all you have to do I don't know if you can see there all you have to do is pop down your hot glue okay and then actually the hot glue is so strong, I like to put a nice, good, generous amount, but the hot glue is so strong that it actually will just hold the piece of wood in place for you. You don't have to do any more, all you have to do is just add that. So that's going to hold there, it should dry, it takes a couple of minutes to dry. And I'm going to get different heights of driftwood to sit my little shells on top of. Okay, so okay, 
this guy looks good. You might need to crack some of them if they're not a height that you want. Okay, so my little shell tree sticks are ready. Um, I'm letting the hot glue just dry because I put it on really thick there. But underneath what I'm going to do is get these little stones that I have. I'm going to make a little bit of a pavement with my hot glue and my stones. I actually find this really relaxing, just getting your little stones and joining them in together. I'm not going to glue all of the base because the uh, I have the sand added and I like the finish of the sand. What do you think, Brenny? Such a good boy, aren't you? You're such a good boy. <laughs> Brittany is very excited about this, aren't you, Brittany? You excited? <laughs> okay, so we're getting all the little different stones and we are hot gluing it down. This is going to take time, but it's relaxing. You could, I don't know what else could you make a floor from. Like, could you think of another material that you could use to stick down on the floor maybe you have old carpet at home little scraps from having carpet put down or lino ask your grown-ups at home what they have like you could even show them that you want to make a little house and see what's in the house like out in the garage is there old materials that are really cool and could you have a little root and see oh yeah that would be great for a floor or Oh, I didn't think about that for this. Like, I'd be really excited to see what you guys would come up with. It's all about creative thinking. Like, what do you have in your house now that you can turn into something else? And that's what it's all about. It's actually much more exciting than going and buying expensive art materials to see what you have and to upcycle them, you know? Add the different textures together, carpet, material, old clothing. Recycle bins are just heaven when you're thinking about doing upskilling like what's in there already that you can use old shoes laces the list really goes on so i'm very excited to see what you guys come up with when you're making your houses what kind of materials do you use and what kind of colors can you think of using and it would be really nice to see okay so i'm adding my little pavement underneath my mushroom forest I'm calling it my mushroom forest but it's just my shells on sticks so let's keep going all right and then we can time lapse as I'm joining the stones I've just gotten inspired guys to put my stones on top of each other and make myself a little garden sculpture in my house I collected some nice little stones today and they look quite cute you know when you see those people adding the stones on top of each other I'm not sure what it's called but you see it done a lot around here um, I'm kind of inspired by that I think they look really cool I don't actually know how people do that so I'd love to try it sometime putting the stones on top of each other by gravity so I've made myself a little sculpture there in my garden which just adds another little bit of fun to the overall house, my little chuck. Okay, adding on the stones. You could be doing this for a year if you want, but I'm just gonna add them to just this corner. Be happy with that then. Okay, so I'm just gonna hot glue on a handle for my door. Hold it for a sec, I'll show you there now. Ooh, it's getting heavy from all my stones and my shells and my tiles. So there's my little handle for my door. I've added a little shell that I got. So this little guy is going to be my door next to my windows. And yeah, all right. Okay, so what are we missing? Got the sculpture check. A little bit of stones for my paving over here. Lovely. Having a look. Bob's your uncle. Really happy with that. Okay, so still missing the color. Keep talking about it. Still haven't added the color. So I'm ready for my colour. I'm just going to pop my little shells on here now because the glue is nice and dry. So pick out your favourites. That can be tough sometimes if you're like me and you have just one million shells going on in your collection. So like I was saying earlier, I particularly like these little guys. They'll work really well. So popping the hot glue 
right up inside there in my shell and then he's going on top of the stick like so now he should kind of balance nearly on top of that if it's not just hold on to it for a minute until it dries a little bit but that is feeling quite strong now we're going to get with our glue going in for my second little guy he's balancing pretty nicely there as well so we're moving on to our last little shell these shells are super easy to find they're a really common shell so you're not going to be stuck if you like these shells you can find them on any beach okay now yeah looking funky okay so what are we up to next i found this on the beach today which is like um i don't know if it's peach or what it is but it looks really nice it's like a nice dark tone i'm gonna make a little entry point out of my door kind of like a little you know walkway up to my door and all i'm doing for that whoops where did he come from okay um all i'm doing for that is popping down my hot glue outside my door whatever it is, I don't know, pieces I found. And I'm thinking that I want to add some more shells because I was really enjoying adding the shells here. And actually, I don't know if Gaudi was inspired by shells, but lots of his forms that he make are spirally like this. So if you see this little, this little shell here, it's quite spirally, so that's exciting for me. And I'm going to, I think I'm gonna make a little doorway here. So I'm popping my shells in on either end of my wall there nice little finishing touch and another little guy over here so boop. looking good and I'm ready for my paint so I'm gonna dive into doing some painting I have all my colors ready let's go so let me see again no plan made I'm just gonna paint on the colors that are appealing to me I don't think that um Gaudi would be unhappy with us using whatever colors we'd want. All right. Okay, so I've added some bright colors there and as I'm painting my bright colors, again, I'm getting inspired just by doing this. I'm thinking it would be really nice to add some other colors on top. So I'm gonna have some fun with the paint here, okay? And um, this is one of my favorite techniques to do. And if you wanna try it, you can. So I'm going back in with my PVA, PVA glue. A PVA glue dries really shiny. So you're not gonna see it right now, but in a minute when it's dry, um, and I show you the finishing one, it'll dry really glossy and shiny, which is really nice. So sometimes I like to mix it in with the paint or just drizzle it on top, just to get a kind of um, a nice unexpected finish. And it's exciting for me as well, because I don't know what's gonna happen. The paint can be kind of thick. So I get some water. And I'm mixing in the water in with my palette here. I'm mixing it into the paint just to make it a little bit runny. And I'm also getting some of my PVA glue and I'm mixing the PVA glue in with the paint, which will make it a little bit more runny. So let's see what happens now when I do this. I'm gonna drizzle different colors on top of the colors that I have and just get a little bit of a wild finish. If you know an artist called Jackson Pollock, you can look him up. He does kind of mad, splashy, fun finishes on his paintings. So let's see what happens. We're really going to be like an ice cream cone now. Lots of colours and lots of unexpected finish. So I'm drizzling the pink down here on top of my yellow. Just because I don't really feel that I have enough colour on my piece. And I want to see what happens if I have a little bit of fun with that. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to go a bit wild here with colours oh. for a minute. Also, I'm drizzling some and then I'm really watering down my paint and I'm loading up my brush with the color and What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and you just get your finger and you tap it over the top You'll get a kind of a splashed effect now If you get your brush and you go splashing it that you're going to get paint all over your face 
you're going to get paint all over your mom's kitchen or wherever you're doing this so that's why I like to go in with my brush and just tap it gently like that and then the paint kind of splashes on this is going to go on my tiles a little bit as well which I like so I'm just really getting some color going here you can use any kind of colors you like or any kind of colors you have we're just getting a bit fun with our color let's see what happens I'll go back in and get some more colors splash them on top of my tiles adding the PV on top of the pieces you can be really excessive with the PVA glue and even though it takes a long time to dry it's very strong you can kind of like add shells you could add shells here you could add sand you could add beads you could add glitter whatever you want at this stage the PVA will literally hold anything it's not like the hot glue gun it won't immediately dry and stick things but what it will do is it'll you know like you can sit in sand into it you can sit in stones into it and it'll re once it dries maybe the next day or after a couple of hours it'll be really strong you're not going to get those stones out of your pva you're not going to get that sand out of your pva it's a strong glue to use and it does take time to dry i really like pva glue it's one of my favorite glues for adding in things so let's see what other kind of fun things we can add in here i have these little I have these little bells here that I have from an old um, necklace that I that I had. So what I did was I cut the necklace because it had broken anyway and I got all these lovely little beads. So maybe ask your mums or your dads um, if they have any old jewellery, you know, a little box of old beads and things. So this could be a nice kind of addition. You could add on some embellishments and finishes. So I like my little guys here. I'm going to add them and actually really good that my clay my clay is still wet your clay might be dry if you've dried it so if, you, if you've left it overnight but if it isn't you can add on these little things and again keeping in touch with my gaudy style of things I am adding more color and I'm adding more shapes really good just to give it a little something. And these colored beads are actually really bright and they have a metallic finish. So I think they're really good for what I want. Stick them in there into the top. I'm gonna go a bit mad with this guy. He's getting loads. So how are we doing? Let's add a tiny little bit more color and then we're going to move on to the next part of our house. So up at the top here, where I've put in all the PVA, there's little walls you can see if you go into any of Gaudi's buildings, especially, our, what's it called, Le Pedrera. Um, his building in Le Pedrera, he's got a wall and it's all like gold and pinks and glitters all on the wall and it's just so beautiful. I'm really inspired by that for my roof on my building and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some color now into the PVA and you'll see what it's like when it's dry it's going to be really cool when it dries because you're going to get all those colors have sank into the PVA and we're going to mix them around together and the nice thing is we won't see how beautiful they are until it's dry so I'm going to do that now mixing in some of the colors into my PVA and when I come back to this tomorrow I'm going to see what that looks like just for a little something extra And you can also use the back of your paintbrush and um, when you have the PVA like this it you know you can make lovely shapes in the PVA with the paint you can spiral it around see what happens I'm going to be very intense with my color I'm literally sparing no colors there's yellow going in there purple going in there blue going in there green I'm gonna put that in and I'm gonna mix them together if you don't like lots of bright colors Maybe you could use some light colors. Maybe you could use some, you know, beiges or 
whatever kind of paints you have, it's really up to the person what you want to add. It doesn't, colour isn't always what everyone likes, but <clears throat> in keeping with what I'm creating, Gaudi inspired, we're definitely all about the colour today. We're all about adding in lots of different colours and lots of different tones. Okay, I'm actually adding in some silver. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to mix in any more colours. I think I'm happy with what we've added. Okay. Maybe a bit yellow here. It's just all about enjoying the process of what you're doing and not being too worried or too concerned about it looking good. Sometimes when I'm making things, I get a little bit concerned that it's not right, it's not perfect, it's not finished well enough. But that's not what art is about and that's not what having fun with it is about. This is just for you. And you're just having fun with mixing the colours and really playing, you know. Art doesn't have to be a serious thing that we have to worry about. If you're having fun with it and you're enjoying what you're creating, generally, it's going to be really good. If you're getting stressed about it and you're worried that someone will think it's not so good, it kind of kills the creativity. So the creativity comes from just making it about you and kind of expressing something that's just about yourself. Like, what do I really like? If I was walking down the street, what kind of art would I love to see on the side of the road? Like, would this be something I want to see? I definitely would be excited if I saw something all bright, coloured and different shapes. I'd get excited, I'd get inspired. So this is about you. What would you like to see? And why wait to see it? Why not create it yourself? It's about creating what you want to yourself. So this is your own little world. Whenever you make art, it really and truly is your own little world. And how exciting is that? You have time and space and your materials, and that's what you're creating. You can put it in your bedroom, you can put it around the house, and you get to see it every day. Okay. So I'm going back in, and I'm just going to clean off some of my tiles that I didn't want to have color on, because I'm kind of liking that tile finish. The paint won't stay on these tiles anyway. You need special paint if you want to paint the tiles. You need tile paint. This poster paint won't be so good good if you wanted to make a piece for outside you could use acrylic paint acrylic paint is really good it's water resistant um, and it'll it'll go on tiles or it'll go on stones whatever you want but this poster paint it's not going to stay okay so I'm cleaning it off roughly I can clean it off more later if I want to okay so those are my crazy little ice cream shapes on top of my roof I really like them as a splash of color um, and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these little guys here I'm not sure what color I'm going to paint them yet, but I'm just go going to give that little splash of color on my shelves. Okay. So I'm making sure to add some PVA on top of my shelves just to give them a glossy finish and also the paint will stick better onto my shelves if I add the PVA. The poster paint will add well. You could add acrylic paint if you wanted to make some of these shelves for your garden. Like you could just get sticks and these shells and make them and stick them into flower pots and stuff. I've seen that done actually quite a few times. People get the shells and they put them on sticks, paint them with acrylic paint and then you can pop them into your garden outside which is lovely. They mightn't last the entire winter in Ireland with all the lashing rain but they'll last long enough to give you a splash of colour in your garden. You can decorate them any way you like as well so that's nice. So I've got splash paint all over my little garden out here as well but that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Okay, so what colours? I've got a lot of colour going on up here, so I'm thinking that I might do similar colours out on my shelves. Okay, but your primary colours are yellow, blue, which I'm doing here, and red. And if you have yellow, blue and red, you can make pretty much any of the other colours, bar black and white. You have to buy them as well, but you can mix blue with red and make purple. I know you know about this anyway, but really if you have those in your press and you want to get more colours, you can just mix them together. If you really like pastel colours, you can just get all your colours and mix them with a little bit of white. Uh, but essentially, the primary colours are all you need to get going on your colour palette. You put out the yellow and the red and the blue and then you can mix them together to get different tones. So if you've yellow and you add a little bit of blue, it'll make a light green more blue, darker green, and so on and so forth. 
and that ties in a little bit to your maths as well so ratios you know when you're doing your ratios in maths like two is to one one is to one the amounts of paints that you mix together um, will give you the different tones of colors that you want so if I got one part yellow and two part blue that would be a really dark green because blue is the darker color if I got one part yellow and one part blue that would be a green a mid a mid green and the more yellow that you add the lighter and the more blue that you add the darker okay so I have my three little bright ones there sitting pretty on the edge of my building and I'm actually just going to leave those I was thinking I might add some splashes of color but I like those to just be my simple little primary colors I love primary colors they're really bright and vibrant and they cheer me up especially if it's raining outside or it's not a, a very sunny day bright colors can really cheer you up even if you make a nice painting for your mums and dads or your brothers and sisters you add nice little bright colors and pop them up on your fridge I think it just makes everybody in a little bit of a better mood. Okay, so finishing touches. Have a little look around. See what you're happy with, if you want to change anything. Have fun with it. If you're like me, you'll never want to stop making it. But for the purpose of the video, we're going to finish making it. I have paint dripping off. Okay, so I'm just thinking a little fence would be cute on the outside of my building, so I'm going to use these little coffee stirring thingamajiggities. Lollipop sticks will work a treat for this. So I'm making my little fence. Same method as we did for our sticks that had our shells on it. We're just going along. I have paint dripping off over there. That's okay. I'm going to make a little fence that has different height pieces on my fence. And I'm popping them along. I'm going to turn it around here so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is while I'm cleaning up my paint dripping off my shells because I put it on pretty thick. I'm just popping a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom of my fence, sticking it in there. And we're going to build a tiny little picket fence. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing lots of different things to show you all the different ideas that I'm thinking of as they come to me. but. You might just do one or two of these. Maybe a fence on a wall is a little bit overkill, but I'm just kind of throwing out lots of different ones so that you guys can play around. And then next for our little picket fence, I'm gonna get one of these long guys, not break it this time. Measure up what I need. These are easy, you don't even need to cut them with a the scissors. You can just stick that on the back of your little fence. Whew. be okay with little gluey fingers putting one on the front it's already escaped and I'm just going to give a nice finish by putting one on the front as well squish them together again get a grown up to help you with the glue gun trim off the excess. Okay, there's my little fancy. And we're gonna do the other side as well. Okay, so hey presto, that is my finished little housheen, my little chucked bug. And I've put the little fairy lights in through one of my windows that I left open. And I'm not sure if you can see on the light, but the whole thing glows. So it lights up. And there is my finished piece. So guys, that was fun. We made a nice little house. Um, I missed my creative kids this Saturday and last Saturday, 
with the way things are we can't have classes at the moment but I still really enjoyed making this myself and I'm really really excited to see what you guys make what you make in your own homes um, and we'll put a link in the video for um, a Facebook page where everyone can upload their own little houses maybe they can give what architect they looked up that they were inspired by so if you find an architect you're inspired by or something that inspired you to make your piece and a picture of your final piece then we would love to see it and we'd love to share them together because that's the nice thing is even though we're inside in our own houses and we're not able to meet up and have play dates or come to creative kids class on um Saturday the thing is is that we can be making these at home and we can share them that's the great thing about the internet we can share them we can show our pictures we can see what different ones people made hopefully inspire each other um, and yeah I think that that would be a really nice way to kind of get get through some of the time that maybe we're feeling a little bit bored or maybe that we can't go to our usual things why not make something at home and then we'll share them on the page um, and if you guys want me to make another video of how to make something or my way of making something, you can leave a comment below the video and let us know if you want us to make something next Saturday. Because Creative Kids will not be on for the next few weeks. So I'd love to hear from all you Creative Kids, even if you don't come to my class, maybe the things that you're making or other artistic things. If you've ideas of something else that you'd like to know how to make or that you're thinking of making yourself, Maybe you can share them and we can all get together and start talking about the different projects that we have. Um, you don't have to be a kid, you don't have to be a child to make something. I am not one. Um, and I had really good time making this today. I know it was for the Creative Kids class, but I really enjoyed making my own little piece and it took me a couple of hours and I got really into it. So yeah, let's see what we come up, come up with, Clannock Hilty, full of lovely creative people. So let's see what we can come up with and what we can share with each other and what we can think of making. This was just an idea I had when I was walking on the beach collecting things about sticking them on the edge. I'm really excited to see what you guys will come up with and what you'll make in relation to your houses. Um, so yeah, be safe guys and have fun and please do upload your um, houses when you make them. Maybe ask your grown-ups in your house how to do that because I really want to see them. I'm missing all my own creative kids and I'm missing seeing what the amazing inventions they come up with. So until next time, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye bye.